let's all stand just a moment for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we have assembled again in this solemn assembly tonight Hallelujah. in the service of the Lord. And thou hast promised that wherever we would meet together, as many as two or three of us, that you would be in the midst of us. And we can be assured that you are here, for we have assembled in his name. Hallelujah. Now we pray, Father, that, that you will come tonight and will break this second seal for us. And as the, the poet has said, he would like to look past the curtain of time, and that's our desire, Lord, is just to, just to look a past and see what lays ahead. And we pray that the lamb that had been slain will come among us now and break the seal and, and reveal it to us, the things we have need to see. There be some here, Lord, who has not yet entered into this great fellowship around Christ, we pray that tonight that they'll make that eternal decision, be filled with the Spirit of God. If there be any sick, Father, we pray that you'll heal them. There are many handkerchiefs laying here that I'm holding my hands uh, upon yeah. in commemoration of, be of the Bible of St. Paul, where they've taken from his body handkerchiefs and aprons. Yeah. Unclean spirits left the people and they were healed. We see the near coming of the Lord. We know that time is drawing nigh. These right. things right. has returned again to the church after 1900 years. Now we pray, Father, that you'll grant these things we ask for. Strengthen thy servant and help thy servants everywhere, Lord, especially we who are assembled here tonight we might be able to receive the word we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Certainly good to be back in the house of the Lord again tonight. And I uh, know so many of you standing, I, I'm sorry about that, but there's just hardly anything more we can do. We've uh, we got the uh, church just to, um, increased it to where we can get three, four, three hundred or four hundred more in, but um, in a special meeting this way it, it carries a little heavier crown. Now, oh, I'm just having a wonderful time uh, praying and studying these these seals. I hope you all are too. I'm, I'm sure you are. And if it's the meaning as much to you as it is to me, it's certainly a, a you're having a wonderful time. And uh, I got a I want to call a girlfriend of mine at the service, and this is her birthday. She's 12 years old today, Sarah, my daughter. And uh, next, then day after tomorrow, I have to make another call because it's Becky's birthday. Mm. Now, tonight we are studying this uh, second seal, and it, for the first four seals, there is four harsh riders, and. I uh, tell you, today something happened again, and I, I, something, and I, I go and get the old script that I had that I start, talked on long ago and just sat down there, and I thought, well, I, I did the very best I could in many uh, writers and things, and I thought, well, i read a little while, look over and see this and that, and the first thing you know, something just happened, and it's altogether different. It just comes in different. Then I grab me a pencil right quick and start writing down as fast as I can while he's there. Oh, it, just something happened just about one half hour ago. I was telling Brother Wood coming down just a few minutes ago, just something, and oh, you know, there's a lot of things happen you just can't talk about, you know, but just something just took place that just helped me so much. Uh, I got a friend here somewhere in the building. Of course, you're all my friends. This this brother is Brother Lee Vale, the precious brother, and, and a real student of the Scripture. Dr. Vale is the Baptist with the Holy Ghost, and he's a, I don't say this complimentary, I just say it's because I believe it. I think he's one of the best verse 
students that I know of along our rank. And um, he just wrote me a little note here, and uh, was sent it in there by Billy. And uh, Billy couldn't hardly uh, uh, make it out to me, and I think I haven't read it over, but I was just going to say what he said here, and I just read it, Brother Vale, if you're here. I just read this about six months ago. I am not positive, he said. Brother Bill, I'm not positive, but I believe that Polycarp was a student of St. John. That's correct. He was. I think Irenaeus was a student of, uh, of Polycarp. That's correct. Exactly. Irenaeus said Jesus will return, uh, will return when the last elected member of the body of Christ comes in. Amen. That was Irenaeus about uh, 400 years after the after the death of Christ. He said, when this last age comes in, now that's in the, uh, the uh, pre-Nicaea Council, you fellows here that read the, the study uh, scripture, and study the, I mean study the history of the Bible, uh, you find that in, pre, in the pre-Nicaea Council. And I think it's the first book or the second book, you, you'll find it. Now, he saw it years ago that he said at the last last spot, last one elected that elected people think that election is something that's just been it's just been something hatched up here lately my that's one of the oldest teachings that we have Amen. election and calling and uh, so Irenaeus certainly uh, the real students of the scripture always believed in election and so uh, Irenaeus is one of the, the angels of the church age, as we seen, as we studied, we believe. Of course, now, they were all mysteries. They're all healed right, hid right here in these seals. And they're uh, to be revealed in the last days. Now, they start off with Paul and, and Irenaeus and Martin and so forth. Down has come on down to the last age. And now, uh, we're trusting now that the Lord will bless us in our efforts tonight. Now, we've been the first seal. I certainly enjoyed that. Amen. The first seal, the blessings that went with it to me. And now, I, I don't want to keep you too long, but you see, I, I'll be going now just again in a few nights, and after this is over, we have to just kind of suffer a little while. I appreciate, I see Brother Junior Jackson stand there, and I, and I thought I seen Brother Ruddle a few moments ago here somewhere, and them brethren, as our sister churches that has let out and the others, we certainly appreciate it. I see Brother Hooper, I believe, standing up along the wall there from Utica, the church there. And we certainly appreciate your all's fine cooperation in this. Now, last evening, as we always like in teaching on the, uh, on the seals, uh, we teach it the same way you do on the... On the uh, the church ages. And uh, when we got finished with teaching the church age, the last time when I draw them out here on the, on the pulpit, on a board, how many remembers what took place? It came right down, went right back on the wall in a light and drawed it off himself right there on the wall before Saul. The angel of the Lord stood right here before several hundred people. And now uh, he's He's doing something real supernatural now, too. And uh, so we're just expecting great things. We don't know. You like to just wait for that, that great anticipation. Just don't know what's going to happen next. You know, just, just waiting. Amen. Now, how great God is to us. How wonderful. We are so appreciating. Now, the first and second verse, I'll read it to kind of give a little background. And then we'll take the third and fourth verse for the second seal. And then the fifth and sixth verse is the third seal. And the seventh and eighth is the two verses to each horse rider. And I want you to watch how these fellows on this pale horse, maybe here it comes, this keeps changing as it goes down. And then that great last seal to be open, if God willing, next Sunday night, that when it happened, there was just only thing had taken place was silence in heaven for a half hour. God help us. Now, I'll read the third verse now. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse. Fourth verse. 
that was red and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth that they should kill one another. And they should kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword. Now, a mysterious thing now when the, the beast told John, just come and see. And he didn't see what it was. He just saw a symbol. And that symbol, for the reason it was, he said, come see, but he saw a symbol that he was to symbolize it to the church in a way that they would watch until it came to the last age and then the seals would be open. Now, everyone understands that now. See, the seals would be open. And aren't you happy to be living in this day? Yeah. That, See, not only that, friends, but always remember now, last Sunday morning, where the whole thing was based on simplicity. Yeah. Yes, yes. Amen. Simple, humble, happens in such a way that people just go right on by and don't even know it happened. And remember, we are looking for the coming of the Lord anytime. And um, when we... Uh, made a statement that uh, uh, perhaps the rapture would be the same way. It'll be gone, over, and no one will know nothing about it. It'll just come like that. See, uh, usually just go on back through the Bible and look how it happens like that. Yes, amen. Even as great a thing as the Lord Jesus coming. Nobody knew that. They thought they, thought they cranked somebody in the church and said, just a fanatic. Well, he's really crazy. He said he's a madman. We know thou art mad. Mad means crazy. We know you've got a devil and it's run you crazy. And you try to teach us when you were born out there illegitimately, where you was born in fornication, try to teach man like us, the priest and so forth, the temple. Well, my, that was a, an insult to them. When John came, been talked about down through the ages from Isaiah to Malachi, that's 1,200 or 712 years. He had been seen of the prophets coming. Everybody was looking for him to come, expecting it at any time. But the way he come, he preached and done his service and went on into glory, and even the apostles didn't know it. Right. For they asked him, they said, Now, if the Son of Man is going to Jerusalem, all these things to be offered. said, Why is it the Scripture says uh, that Elias is going to come first? Jesus said, He's already come. You didn't know it. And he did just exactly what the Scripture said he would do. And they did to him just what was listed. Amen. And they couldn't understand. He said it was John. And, oh, see, they, they woke up to it. They, and when, uh, even at last, after all the things he, he had done, and the signs that he had showed him, and had even called him and said, which one of you can condemn me of sin? Unbelief. If I haven't done just what the Scripture said that my office would do when I come to the earth, then show me where I've sinned. See? And I'll, I'll show you what you're supposed to be, and let's see whether you believe it or not. See? They'd come right back and said, you're supposed to believe on me when I come. And they didn't do it, see? So they know better than tie and hold him on that. But he said, which one of you can accuse me of unbelief? See? Haven't I done just what it was? And even the apostles going along stumbled. We know how the scriptures go. Then finally at last, they said, now we believe. We believe that no man has to tell you, for you know all things. And I'd just like to see his face, and he must have looked at him and said, Well, do you now believe? <laughs> Finally it dawned on him. <laughs> well, it wasn't supposed to be maybe until that time. You see. And God works everything just right, you know. I, I love him for that. But now we're thinking of our age now. Because we get talking on that, we won't get into these seals at all. And um, I remember... Uh, I'm getting much requests for prayer for the sick, and I'm praying for the, uh, all the time for every request they get in for the handkerchiefs and things. And if we can get these seals finished up to the last seal Sunday morning, we, if it be the will of the Lord, we'd like to have just a good old-fashioned healing service here. You know, we just take the entire morning for praying for the sick. And I, I'm pretty sure it'll be a strange healing meeting. Yeah, I just have a feeling like that. And, and um, so, um, not strange, but it may be a little strange to some. 
Um, now, how great is God's grace to reveal his secrets to us in this day? Amen. Now, we all will believe that we're living in the last day. Amen. We believe that. And remember, the secrets was to be revealed in the last day. And how does he reveal his word, his secrets? The Bible. Would you like to read where he says it? Let's just turn over and see how he reveals his secrets. Now, I want you to read Amos. Turn over to the book of Amos. And I want you to read in the third chapter of Amos and the seventh verse. All right. I'll read the sixth verse, too. Shall a trumpet blow in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord has not done it? Surely the Lord will do nothing but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Now, in the last days, we are, it's predicted to us that there will rise uh, a prophet. Now, we know that we've had all kinds, I realize that looking around tonight, uh, I'm speaking here where students are sitting, and I, I'd like for you to understand me, and you realize these tapes cover the world. See, just about all the world. And I want you to not by no means think that I am trying to inject some kind of a, a cult of Elijah's blankets or robes and all, all those things we've had plenty of. But you know, all those things are only a forerunning of the real thing that is to come to throw the people off. Did you know we had false... Uh, uh, False leaders raised up false messiahs before Christ come. Didn't, uh, did not the, the teacher of that day, that mighty teacher Gamaliel, when the, the question come up about uh, beating these men and so forth, he said, let them alone. If it's of God, well, you'll be fine fighting against God. But if it isn't of God, said, didn't a man raise up not long ago take 400 into the wilderness and so forth? We have those things. What was it? All forerunning the real thing when it comes. Now, see, Satan raises those up. What's the shrewdness of this fellow that we're talking about here, Satan, where we're unfolding him right here? Just stripping him down by the Scriptures and let you see who he is. Amen. That's what the, what's supposed to be done. And you remember, he has not tried to go in and be a communist. Satan hasn't. He's an antichrist. So close that Jesus said would deceive the very elected. And that's the ones that's hid down in these seals whose names are on the book since the foundation of the world. He is a shrewd fellow. And when he sees this thing coming, coming up, then he throws everything he can out there to upset it before it gets there. Yes. Did you know there will be false Christ to rise in the last days? Yes. It should follow immediately after this, after this great message that this uh, a brother will speak that will actually come be anointed in the spirit of Elijah, immediately. And they'll mistake him. Some of them will think he's the Messiah. But he'll strictly say no. Because it's got to be coming like John. In the time of John the Baptist, when he came out there to preach, they said to him, aren't you the Messiah? Aren't you he? He said, I am not. I'm not worthy to lose his shoes. But I, I baptize with water, but he'll baptize with the Holy Ghost. And John was so sure that he's on earth, he said, He is among you somewhere now. But he didn't know him until he saw that sign come down upon him. Then when he seen that light coming down and spread out like a dove and lit up on him, he said, There he is. Amen. But John was the only one who saw it, you know. John was the only one who heard the voice. All the rest of them there, no one heard it. But then when the real true servant comes on with all the impersonation to it, it's to upset the people's mind. Satan does that. And those who can't discern right from wrong, they just tumble over. But the elected won't do it. The Bible said he wouldn't be able to deceive the elected. And now just before the coming of Christ, the Bible said there would be false Christ to rise and would claim to be Christ. He would say, Lo, the people say he's in the desert. Don't believe it. Lo, he's in the secret chamber. Don't believe it. For as the sun shineth from the east and to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. See? Yes, 
he'll, he'll, he'll appear and it'll be a universal thing. And now that will, now of course, when they find out that something has taken place, you see, then they'll, now remember, that will take place immediately after the going home of the church, after the rapture. Now, there'll be false impersonations all the time, and we do not mean to be connected in anything like that. No, sir. And I believe when the person comes, this one that's predicted to come, I'm showing it only by the scriptures that the man will have to be a prophet. Amen. He certainly will. In the revelation of God, because God, the word of the Lord, comes to his prophet. Amen. Exactly right. That's, and God cannot change, you see. If he had a better system, he would, he would have used it. But uh, he, he's got, he chose the best system at the beginning. It's like he could have chose the sun to preach the gospel. He could have pro- chose the moon. He could chose the, the wind. But he chose man. Amen. And he never did choose groups, Amen. individuals. Amen. See, and never two major prophets on the earth at the same time. Amen. See, every man is different. He's got a different makeup. And God can get one person. That's all he has to have. Right in his hand, he can do what he wants to. Amen. He just has to have one. In the days of Noah, days of Elijah, days of Moses, many throws up in the time of Moses. You know how they did and wanted to say, well, you're not the only holy one in the bunch and, uh, and uh, Dathan and, and uh, Korah. And God said, just separate yourself. I'll just open up the earth and swallow them away, you see. And, and so, and then the people got to complaining. He said, I'll just, I'll just take the whole thing away. And there Moses took the place of Christ then to throw himself in the breach and say, don't do it, Lord, see. And... Of course, he, after he had ordained Moses to do this, he didn't come over Moses because he was acting like Christ in that time. It was Christ in Moses. Amen. Absolutely. Now, we're so glad today that God is revealing his self to us. And I believe the great day has just begun dawning, breaking, the lights are beginning to flash. The birds of paradise is begin to sing in the saints' heart. They know that it isn't long now. Amen. Something's going to happen. Just got to. So if he does not do anything, now all Scripture is inspired. The Scriptures must absolutely be the truth. No way around it. That's why, different with our friends, the Catholic Church, I believe that it was not written by just mere man. I believe it was moved by the Holy Spirit. And all these little things that's been added, tried to add to it. Did you notice that the solvent up there is everyone kicked out? And these real true scriptures dovetail one with the other to live. There's no contradiction in them, nowhere at all. Show me one piece of literature that can... It can write a verse hardly without contradicting itself, write a verse or two. And the Bible does not contradict itself anywhere. Amen. I've heard the old critics say that, but I've had an offer for him for a long time <laughs> to show me where it's at. Amen. It isn't in here. It's just because the human mind is confused. God's not confused. He knows what he's doing. He knows. And look, if God's going to judge the world by a church, as the Catholic Church says it is, all right? Then what church is that? Just look at the churches we got. We got 900 and something different organization of churches. Now, uh-huh. huh? One teaches this way and one that way. What a confusion. Then anybody just do anything you want to. You go on anyhow. God's got to have some standard. Amen. That's his word. Amen. Speaking, not throwing off to the Catholic now because the uh, uh, Protestants just as bad. But uh, speaking with a priest, he said, Mr. Branham, he said, God is in his church. I said, sir, God is in his word, and he is in his word. Yes, sir. He said, well, he's in the, the church is infallible. I said, he don't say that. But he said, the word's infallible. Yes. He said, well, we used to teach that baptism that way and so forth. I said, when? He said, back in the early days. I said, do you allow that to be the Catholic church? He said, yes. I said, then I'm Catholic. Old-fashioned Catholic. I'll be the old-fashioned way. Amen. You guys today has got all messed up. And hardly anything in the Scripture you teach. Intercession with women and dead people and all these other things. and Oh, my, non-meat-eating and oh, I don't know what all. See? And I said, you find that in the Scripture for me. He said, they don't have to be there. 
As long as the church says so, that's it. Don't make any difference what that says. It's the church. I said, the Bible said that whosoever shall add one word to it or take one away, his part will be taken from the book of life. Amen. So it's the word, I believe, the word. Now, and then if Amos says, and other scriptures that go with it, that if, uh, and you remember on this, we're just striking the highlights of it. Just my, if uh, when I get in that room there and, and that anointing comes in, if I could write down what, he, what all goes on, I'd be here for three months on one of the seals. So just strike the places and let it out just what it would seem to be that wouldn't choke the people, but yet uh, not enough to hurt them, but just so that believing it is, it is seasoned the things. You know what I mean. Now, watch this now. If God does not do nothing, said Amos, until first he reveals it to his servants, the prophets, and then we see what he's doing, it must be that he's fixing to do something, <laughs> what he's revealing now. God is fixing to move on the scene in judgment, I believe. Amen. He's fixing to do something. And one thing again to testify, surely we are in the last day. Amen. We're at the end of the age, the Lady of Sia, church age. Now, for these things were to be revealed only at the last day. I just think of that now. It's just, just try to soak in what we believe that the Holy Spirit would have us know. Now remember, nothing to be revealed. God will do nothing at all until first he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. And before he does anything, he reveals it. And when he reveals it, you can remember this, something's on its road. Okay? It's been revealed. And these things that we're talking about was to be revealed at the last day, just before the last trumpet, at the end of the message of the last church age. That's right. Amen. If you want to read that now, you can turn to, uh, you, I just referred to you last night two times, Revelations 10, 1 to 7, see? And in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel's message, the mystery of God would be revealed and finished. Amen. And there's only one thing left when this uh, seven-sealed book is open, then the entire mystery of God, while we probed that through years, and according to the Scripture then, we, there was no way to understand it until this day. Amen. Because it's been hid. Amen. We've seen the symbol, what it was symbolized by, but it could not be correctly revealed until the last day. See? Now then, we must be there at the, at the end time. Now, remember, don't, and don't forget now, that he does nothing until he reveals it, and don't forget also that he does it in such a simple way that the wise and the prudent miss it. Now, if you want to mark that down, that's Matthew 11, 25, 26. And um, remember, he does nothing till he reveals it, and he reveals it in such a way that the smart, educated people miss it. Remember, it was wisdom that the world desired instead of the Word when the first sin did what it did. Amen. Don't forget that now. Oh, how grateful we should be to think that. Now, just look at the things that happened. Look at the things that he's told us. Look at here in this tabernacle, you people that we've been raised up here with. Now, I'm going to uh, ask the tapes. Uh, well, go ahead, take it. But look, I'm just going to say this to the tabernacle people. You that's been here, I charge any of you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, to ever 
to put your finger on one thing of the hundreds of things that's been told before they come to pass and say they did not come to pass. Tell me one time that on the platform, out there, wherever it was, that he ever spoke anything that wasn't perfectly just exactly that way. Amen. How could a human mind be that way? Certainly not. When he appeared down there on the river 33 years ago this coming June in the form of a light, you old timers remember that I told you since a little boy, that voice and that light, and people thought it's kind of a little bit off of the head for us. I would have probably thought the same thing. Somebody said it. But now, you don't have to wonder about it now. And the church has some wonders since 1933. Down the river that day, where I was baptizing hundreds of people. I remember that mayor boy told me, said, you're going down to duck those people, Billy. Little Jim Mayer down here. I think he's dead now. I think he got killed out there. Some woman shot him. But he, he asked me, are you going down to duck those people? I said, no, sir. I'm going to baptize them in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. And there was a woman going along in the group. She said to another woman, she said, uh, uh, made a remark, something about it. She said, well, I wouldn't mind to be ducked. said, that's all right. I don't care. I said, go back and repent. You're not fit to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. This is not nothing to play with. It's the gospel of Christ revealed by commission. The word. Just, now, if you stay in nonsense and foolishness, you could place it somewhere else. But remember, it's promised in the word that this would happen. Yeah. And just exactly what it would be, and here it is. Then down there that day, when they were standing at the river, and the angel of the Lord that I told you that it looked like a, a star or something in a distance, then he got close and told you how the ember of light looked, and there it come right down on the river where it was baptizing. When businessman down here in the city said, what does that mean? I said, that wasn't for me. That was for you. I believe. Amen. That was for your sake Amen. that God did that. Amen. So let you know that I'm telling you the truth. But being a kid, a boy, like about 21 years old, they, they wouldn't believe that, you see, because it's too much for a kid. And then I was thinking, Brother Roberson here, one of our trustees, I seen here a few minutes ago, he was telling me the other day about being in Houston. When the picture there was taken that you see, and I was uh, on that debate, I was starting to say something about it the other night. Brother Roy was the only, with one more man, was the only person in the group that had a recorder. It's one of the old-fashioned wire recorders. I see Brother Roberson now and his wife. So, it, and uh, this Miss Roberson was sick. Brother Roy was a veteran, and his legs blowed, and they laid him out for dead. He was an officer in the in the army and a a uh, German uh, 88 uh, hit this tank that he was uh, with and it just uh, killed a man and blowed him to pieces. They laid him out for dead for a long time and they said he never would wa walk because both legs were severed, the nerves in him and things. My, you know, was that walk me? <laughs> but what was it? There was something that he seen and he went to Houston and he was telling me about his wife. And he's got the he's got the wire. He's going to fix it on a tape, and if the services is over here, well, he's going to play it for you all. I hope. And uh, on the old wire tape there, he's got the my services held in Houston. And then uh, his wife, he said, got her on there. And he never noticed it till the other day. She was uh, oh, she was so sad. She was sick, and she wanted to get into the prayer line. They never knew me. I never seen them in my life. So she was sitting at a, a window that day looking out and so uh, dreary, you know, and upset and wishing she could get a prayer card to get in the line. And happened to be that night she got in the line, or night after or something, I believe the same night. And she got in the line, and when she got up on the platform, the Holy Spirit told her, said, now, you're not from here, you're from a city called New Albany, <laughs> and said, 
You were sitting at a window today looking out and all worried about getting a prayer card. <laughs> there it is on the tape, years ago. And then at the beginning of the meeting, when the Holy Spirit was there, that's the first of the meeting, we was only having about 3,000 people. Then we went to 8,000, then to about 30,000. So then in the, um, while I was speaking at the, one of the very first meetings, I said, I don't know why that I'm saying this, that's on the tape, but it's, we are, this is going to be one of the highlights of my time. Something is going to happen during this meeting. It's going to be greater than anybody's seen yet. And it was just about eight or nine, ten nights after that when the angel of the Lord appeared before around 30,000 people and cut down. The picture was taken. There it is right now, which is copyrighted in Washington, D.C. as the only supernatural being that was ever photographed in the world. Amen. And I talked about, you know, saying that sometime under the discernment, Say, a person is shattered to death. There's a dark hood of a shadow. They're fixing to die. And then up here at East Pines or Southern Pines, I believe it is, just when I was there in the last meeting, a little lady sitting there and something told her, take that picture right quick when I was speaking to the lady. And there it was. I think it'll be on the bulletin board, has been for quite a while. There's that dark hood hanging right over the lady. She showed another picture as soon as the Holy Spirit announced it. It was gone said, you're going to be healed. The Lord healed you. The cancer is gone. And there it was, and she was healed. Amen. See? There you are. See, it just goes to show that God knows what uh, the time of day it is. We don't. We just have to obey. Now, we can just keep on talking, but let's get down here now just a minute and touch this back seal so we can blend this one in with it. Now, just to review for a few, mo a few moments, the the other, the first seal. We notice in the breaking of the first seal, Satan uh, has a, a super religious man. Did you notice that white horse rider, which they, it was thought to be that that was a their early church going for. Oh my, that's been taught through the years, but it couldn't be. You just watch when the rest of them, when they get them all tied together, then look where it's at. Now, and I don't know what the rest of them is going to be yet, but I know it's got to come just perfectly in there because it's the truth. It's the truth. That was the hierarchy church of Rome. Exactly. These people who think that the Jews are the Antichrist, they are certainly a million miles off the line. Amen. You never think the Jews are an antichrist. Their eyes were blinded purposely that we might have a way to get in, giving us a time of repentance. But the antichrist is a Gentile. Amen. Certainly it is an impersonator Amen. of the truth, anti-against. Now, this great Superman, oh, how uh, he uh, become a great man and and then finally was thrown. And then after thrown, he was crowned. And now he, after that, he was worshipped in the stead of God. Amen. Now, look, before that ever come, I want to ask you something. Who was that? What was that on Paul in 2 Thessalonians 2-3 that said that man would come? Why did that man look down through the age and see it? He was God's prophet. Amen. Certainly. Why was he said the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times Amen. that they depart from the faith and would give heed to seducing. You know what seduce is? Amen. A seducing spirit in the church. That is clergy. Amen. Seducing clergy spirit. Amen. Workings of devils, hypocrisy in the church, heady, high-minded, wisdom, you see, smart, intelligent, having a form of godliness. Just go and say, well, we're Christians, we should go to church. Having a form of godliness, but denying the revelations, the power, and the working of the Spirit from such turn away. Now, notice he said... 
For this is the sort that will go from house to house and will lead silly women, and I don't mean Holy Ghost women, Amen. silly women that's led away with divers' lust. Divers' lust, they just like to get in every little thing that they can get into in all kinds of societies and live any way they want to, and still we go to church, we're just as good as anybody. Amen. Dances, parties, cut their hair, paint, dress, anything we want to. Still, we're, we're Pentecostals. We're, we're just as good as anybody. Oh, your own works identify you. Amen. Notice, but he said, man of reprobate mind concerning truth. What is the truth? The word. This is right. Concerning the truth. Oh, you make, you, you're a woman driver. You're a woman hater. You do this, that. No, sir. That's not right. That's a, a falsehood. I do not hate women. No, sir, I, they're my sisters, if they are sisters. Amen. But the thing I... Uh, love is corrective. If it isn't corrective, it isn't love. Amen. If it is, then it, if it's love, it's, it's um, filial love and not a gospel. I'll tell you that. They might have a little filial love for some nice-looking lady, but uh, a gospel love is a different thing. Amen. That's a love that straightens the thing out and meet God down there somewhere Amen. we can live eternally. See? I didn't mean that maybe in the way it sounded, but I, you know what, uh, I, I hope you understand. Amen. All right. Now, but remember, he said, as Jambus, and Jambus withstood Moses, so will they. Amen. Amen. But their folly was soon made manifest. Amen. Why? When Moses was commissioned to do something that seemed radical. But he went down there just as honest as he could be. And God told him to take this uh, the stick and to throw it down and it would turn to a serpent. And then he did it to show him what it would take place. And before Pharaoh, he stood out there just as God had commissioned him and threw down his stick and it turned to a serpent. And no doubt uh, Pharaoh said a cheap magician trick. So he goes and gets his, his jabbers and jabbers said, we can do those things too. And he threw down the stick, and they become serpents. Now, what can Moses do? <laughs> what was it? It was a showing that every genuine thing of God, the devil's got an impersonator for. Yeah. They impersonate to throw the people off the track. Yeah. What did Moses do? He said, well, I guess I made a mistake. I better go back. He just stood still, for he carried out his commission to the letter. Yeah. Then the first thing you know, Moses serpent eat up the other one. See? Did you ever think what become of that other serpent? Where did he go to? Moses picked up the stick and went on out with it. He worked miracles with it. And that serpent was on the inside of this other stick. Amen. 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 That's wonderful, isn't it? Yes, sir. Now, Antichrist comes into light gradually. I want you to notice. Now, when you hear now to my Catholic friends, just sit still just a minute. Now, and then we're going to see where the Protestants, where we all are. See? Notice, the first church, when the Catholic church says that they were the first original church, they're exactly right. They were. They began at Pentecost. That's where the Catholic Church began. <coughs> now, I once didn't hardly believe that. I read history and I find out it's right. They begin at Pentecost. But they begin to drift. And you see where they're at? And if Pentecost drifts with the speed it's drifting now, they won't have to go 2,000 years. In 100 years from now, they'll be farther away than the Catholic Church is. That's right. But notice how this white horse rider now, we just background it a little till he hit this seal. Now, notice the white horse rider when he went out, he, he serves in three stages. The devil is a fruit to the night, is in a trinity just like God. But it's the same devil all the time Amen. in three stages. Notice his stages. In the first stage, he come in, the Holy Ghost fell. And people had everything in common. And the Spirit of God was upon them. And the apostles uh, went from house to house, breaking bread with the people. 
and there was great signs and wonders wrought, and, and then the first thing you know, Satan began to cause a murmur to come up. Then after a while, these slaves and the poor of the land what received the Holy Ghost, they went out into different places testifying. They testified to their masters, and after a while, they began to come all like uh, army captains and, uh, and the different people, a celebrity, begin to see the gallantry and the miracles and signs that these men done. So they accepted Christianity. Well, then you see, when he embraced Christianity and go down there to a place where they're meeting in a little old dark dungeon hall and clapping their hands and shouting and speaking in tongues and getting messages, well, he can never take that to his, his uh, uh, competitor or whatever it is in his business. You never believe it like that. Certainly not. So he's got to dress it up. So they begin to get together and begin to think, now we'll form something a little different. And the Jesus, right immediately at the first church age, he told him in the second chapter of uh, Revelation here, I have somewhat against you because these deeds of the Nicolaitans, Nicol, Honker, the laity. In other words, they want to make, instead of everybody be one, they want to make some holy fellow. They want to make some kind of a, they want to pattern it in paganism from where they've come out and they've finally done it. Now watch. First, Nicolaitan. The Nicolaitan was called in the Bible Antichrist because it was against the original doctrine of Christ and the apostles. I don't want to call this man's name. He's a great man. But I was at his meeting here a few years ago, and he knew I was there because it shook his hand. And he said, oh, you know, we have such a day that they call Pentecostal. And he said, uh, they, they rely upon the book of Acts. And he said, you see, the Acts is only scaffold work for the church. Would you imagine a man that studied the Bible, a gallant old man, and the study the Bible the way that fellow has, and then would make a remark like that? It sounds, it, it, it even doesn't sound like the Holy Spirit is around. It's got not to be nowhere. Because anybody with common understanding would know that the acts of the apostles was not acts of the apostles. It was the acts of the Holy Spirit in the apostles. Amen. Don't you know how we pattern out in the church ages that them beasts sitting there watching that, Amen. Mark there, Matthew, Mark, Amen. Luke, and John standing there watching that, and in there's what happened as a result of the writing of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Amen. That's what the tree put its forth, its first branch, and that's what happened. And if that tree ever puts forth another branch, they'll write another book of Acts behind it. Amen. Of course, you see, the same life's got to be in the same name. Amen. So now today, when we look over our denominational churches, Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Church of Christ, so-called, and Pentecostals and things. Where do we find that? You don't find it. I will admit that the Pentecostals has the closest thing to it. There is because they're up here in the Lady of Sin Church age. They had truth and rejected it. They got lukewarm with it and God spewed them from his mouth. Exactly according to the Scriptures. You can't make them Scriptures lie. They're going to be truthful always. Don't try to, the only thing, don't try to line your thought up uh, to the, uh, uh, the scriptures up to your thought, but rely on yourself up with the scripture. That's, then you're running with God. No matter how much you have to cut away or lay aside, line up with that. Amen. Look what it did the first time it fell. Well, if God acted like that the first time, he's got to act like that the second time. He's got to act like that every time or he acted wrong the first time. Amen. See, we as mortals, we can make mistakes. God can't. God's first decision is perfect. And the way he chose to do things, there can't be no other better way. He can't improve on it because it's perfect to begin with. If it isn't, then he is an infinite. And if he's infinite, then he's omnipotent. And if he's omnipotent, he's omnipotent. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He's got to be that to be God. Amen. See, so he, you can't say, I, he learned more. He didn't learn more. He's a, he's the very fountain of all Amen. wisdom. Amen. Our wisdom here comes from Satan. We inherited it from Eden where we swapped off faith for wisdom. Eve did it. Now, he was first called Antichrist. The second stage, he was called the false prophet. 
because that spirit among the people become incarnate. You remember the white horse rider now had no crown when he started, but then he was given a crown. Why? He was a Nicolaitan spirit to begin with, and then he became incarnate in a man, and then he was crowned and received a throne and was crowned. And then he served that for a long time, as we'll see as we, the seals break. And then we find out after that long time, Satan was kicked out of heaven. And he come down according to the scriptures and enthroned himself. Amen. Just think, enthroned himself in that man and become a beast. Yes. And he had power, supreme power, like that he done all the miracles and everything that that uh, the uh, killings and bloody fights and everything that that Rome could produce. All right, he killed by cruel Roman punishment. Just oh, how we could break in some scriptures here. Remember, Jesus Christ died under the punishment of Rome. Amen. Capital punishment. The message that I've got in my heart to preach up here at this next meeting on Good Friday afternoon. These three, four things. See, there they crucified him. There, the holiest religious place in the world was Jerusalem. They, the most holy supposed to be people in the world, the Jews. There, they crucified the most cruel punishment that Rome could produce. Crucified him. What? The greatest person that ever lived. Amen. There they crucified him. Oh my. God help me to swing into that bunch of businessmen so they can see where they're standing. Right. Now, not to be different, not to be nasty, but to shake that to them. Brothers can see that their dignitaries and holy fathers and things are writing up in this businessman's journal is nonsense. Amen. Christians are not supposed to call any man father. They start that. I've tried to help them in everything I can. You see, you know where this tape goes. So I'm finished. Amen. I certainly won't have anything else to do with it. All right. First, remember Christ. First, as Nick, Nicolaitan. And what did the Nicolaitan age ask for? It asked to get away from them, a bunch of people that shouts and claps their hands and looks like disgracefully. Like they did on Pentecost, act like drunk men staggering in the spirit and things. They didn't want none of that stuff. They said they were drunk. Yeah. And when the celebrity, listen, don't miss this. It may sound crazy to you, but it's the truth. Yeah. When the, the dignitaries begin to come in, they couldn't stoop to that. Right. What makes God big is because he's big enough to stoop down. Yeah. That's what makes him big. Yeah. There's nothing bigger. And he stooped the lowest that anybody could stoop. Any Amen. human being Amen. ever stooped. Amen. He was the king of heaven. Amen. And he come to the, to the lowest city on the earth, Jericho. And he got so low that even the shortest man in the town had to look down on him. <laughs> the scene. Is that right? Amen. Exactly. Amen. That's right. He was called a... Worst name that any human being could be called. Yeah, a sorcerer, a devil, Beelzebub. Yeah. That's what the world thought of him. Died the cruelest death. Didn't have a place to lay his head. Amen. Kicked out by every organization. Amen. But when God exalted him so high, so he has to look down to see heaven. Yeah. Yeah. God in humility. Yeah. And give him a name so great that if the whole family of heaven is named after him. And every family there on earth, all the family on earth is named Jesus. Amen. All the families in heaven is named Jesus. Amen. And such a name that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess to him. Either here or in hell. Hell will bow to it. Everything else will bow to it. See, but first it was humility. Then it become great. Let God exalt. He that humbles himself, God will exalt. 
Now, we notice this nickel spirit wanted wisdom, smarter. It had to reason it out like it wasn't Eden. Reason a, a, against the Word of God by the wisdom, and the church fell for it. What was it? Now, yes, they take this church here and take a bunch of people like we are. If it wasn't real spirit filled, and let's take, say, uh, nothing against the mayor of our city. I don't think I know him, Mr. Buttoff. Is he still mayor? I don't know. Mr. Buttoff's a fine friend of mine. <laughs> but say the mayor of the city. And all the police force, and uh, and uh, all the marshals, and they, they all come here. The first thing you know, if they got just a little thing in their head and begin to talk to the board and the people around here, and say, now, you know what, this ought to be different. If you're not spirit-filled and got a real spirit-filled man behind the pulpit, the first thing you know would be catering to them. Yeah. Maybe not this generation, maybe the next generation. Amen. And that's where it started in. See? Wow, they were saying, looky here, it's reasonable. You, you listen to this. Say a man come in here that could say, this church is too little. Let us build a big church. I'll build you one out there. It'll be worth so much money. I have a million dollars it'll be put in there. I'll put the thing on the broadcast. When they do that, then they got an ax to grind. Nine times out of ten, you know, one of them. First thing you know, then if he does, he runs things to suit himself. You can't stand because Brother John Doe back there, he's the finest of this church. And then you get a little Ricky out of some seminary that knows about as much about God as a hot and hot does about Egyptian night, and he'll come along there, and he'll cater to that guy because he buys him a new car all the time, lets him ride around, buys him this, that, and the other. Amen. Now, that's exactly how it started out. <laughs> right. Notice, wisdom and smartness. They said, now look here, is it only sensible that, uh, now, uh, our, our women, what difference does it make how they wear their hair? But the Bible says it does make a difference. Amen. Amen. Just take that one thing, besides the hundreds of others, see? it does make a difference. God said it made a difference. Amen. So it is a difference. Amen. But you see, if they get that started, the trustee board, deacons and everything, the first thing you know, the pastor either gets in or gets out. <laughs> yeah. That's all. Yeah. See, it's the people that voted it in. All right? Now, notice that spirit begin to move, and the church that, that, that got so much dignitary in, so much big things, and so much money started, but after a while, they listened to it and fell for it, the crudeness of the devil. And that's the very thing that Eve done in the Garden of Eden. Right. Now you hear that? That's right. Look, the natural woman, Adam's bride, before he come to her as a wife, fell for the Satan's scheme against the Word of God by reasoning it. Before Adam lived with Eve as a wife, Satan beat him there. Right. You heard the bride tree I preached on. That Amen. talks up, see. All right. Now notice. There, Eve fell for reasoning. Now, he, Satan tried to reason. She said, but the Lord said. He said, oh, oh you know, but surely the Lord won't. Yeah. You, you ought to be wise. You ought to know something. Well, you're nothing but a dumb child. See? You ought to know something. If that isn't Satan... <laughs> If that isn't some of these modern, <laughs> oh, they're just a bunch of holy rollers. Don't fear them. See, don't move. Now, the natural first bride of the human race, before her husband come to her, she fell from grace by listening to Satan's lie after God had her fortified behind his word. If she'd have stayed behind the word, she'd have never fell. Amen. Now, that's in the natural. Notice. The natural woman. And what was the curse? The actual curse of coming out from behind God's word. Now, remember, she bleeds about 98% of it. But she just had to let one thing go. See? She believed a whole lot of it. 
Oh, certainly. She said this and Satan admitted that's right. He can just get you on one corner. That's all he wants. Amen. See? Only thing you have to do is give the bullet a little twist this way and miss the target. Amen. See? That's all. Now, she bleeds so much of it, but yet missed it. Now, and the, and the results because she left the word for one little speck of a reason. I say, now, what about the women? Or why are you going to talk about something like that? But any of those little things. What's the difference? Where's initial evidence? It's something to it. You got, it's got to be straightened out. Amen. We pursued that through seven church ages almost. But the hours come Amen. when God speaks it, and He don't only speak it, but He shows it and vindicates it and proves it. Yeah. Right? If He doesn't do it, then it isn't God. That's all. Amen. God stands behind His word. Notice now. Now, the natural woman caused natural death because she listened to reason to make herself wise, make herself wise. Instead of staying behind the Word and doing what God told her to, she wanted wisdom and be wise, and she listened to reason, and, and she lost the whole human race. Yeah. Now, this time, the spiritual woman, the bride of Christ, that started on the day of Pentecost with the early apostolic church, lost the same thing Amen. at the Nicaea Council. Yes, right. Lee, you know that's right. And it, at the Nicaea Council, when she swapped her spiritual birthrights yes. to take Constantine's big churches and things that he offered them there, yes. and she sold out her scriptural birthrights for a bunch of Roman dogma. Yes. Now, that's hard on the Catholic, but the Protestant has done the same thing when represented the Bible here as a daughter of the, a harlot of the whore. That's, right. Amen. that's exactly right. Every one of them. Right. No excuses. But out of there has always been a little remnant. Right along. That goes to make the bride. Notice, she lost her birthright. See, before her husband got to her. See? Before the wedding, she lost her virtue. And now you remember that she said, I sit as a queen. I have no need of nothing. And that lady is seeing age there. I'm rich, increased in good, so forth. And all oh, the whole world looks up to me. I'm the great holy church and so forth. We're this way, the whole age. And he said, you don't know that you're a naked, blind, miserable, wretched, or and don't know it. That's the condition. Now, if the Holy Spirit said the condition would be that way in the last days, it's that way. There's no way of getting around it. That's the way it is. Now what? Now, when she sold her birthrights back there, her virtuous right of the Word, what did she do? When Eve did it, she lost the creation. Whole creation fell under. Now, notice. And when the church did it, except the dogmas, instead of the Spirit and the Word, it cursed the whole system, Amen. every denominational system that ever was or ever will be, was cursed with it and fell. Because there's no other way when you get a bunch of men together to figure out anything. One's got a head this way, one's got a head that way, and one's got a head this way. They put the things together and shake it up, and when it comes out, that's what you got it. That's exactly what they do at the Nicaea Council. That's exactly what they do at the Methodist, Presbyterian, Church of Christ, and the rest of them. Amen. And no oh man, no matter what God reveals to him, you got to teach it the way their credential, their treat, creed says, or they'll kick you out. Amen. Now don't tell me I've been there. Amen. And I know it. And that's just exactly what's happened. So the whole thing's cursed. Amen. No one of the angels said, Come out of her, my people. That she not partake of her place because she's going to. She's cursed and she's got to suffer the curse of God's wrath upon her because she sold her virtue and right. But, oh my. But remember, seeing all that condition, but yet God promised in Joel 2.25, he's going to put it down, in the last days, when he said, what the palmer worm left, the caterpillar eaten, what the caterpillar left, the uh, 
The locust is eating what the locust is eating, just on down, bug after bug. And come and eat on that church until finally it was nothing but a stump. What? What the Romans left, the Lutherans eating, what the Lutherans left, the Methodists eating, what the Methodists left, the Pentecostals eating. See, until she's down to a stump. And do you know what? You take those worms in there, the locust and caterpillar and so forth, and you chase them down through the, uh, the book and find out it's the same worm Amen. in just different stages. Amen. Hold your point. Amen. So is these seals. Amen. It's the Amen. same worm. Amen. You're going to see it when we bring it out. So I'll tell you now. It's the same worm all the time. Four old worms, four years, and the other, the same thing, it's the same spirit. Yeah. What one left the other eat, what well, this one left the other eat, like that. So they brought it to a stump. But Joel said, I will restore, saith the Lord, all the years the caterpillars eat. What is it? How is he going to do it? If it started out anti Christ, but being against the teaching of Christ, that accepted dogma instead of word, and through the years the reformers has plunged at it, as the Bible says, but in the last day, at the sounding, Revelations 10, 1, 7, he said the mysteries of God will be finished in the last days at the sounding of the seven angels. Amen. Malachi 4 said that he would send Elisha before the evil day come upon the earth when it burned it like a furnace and he would restore Amen. and would bring Amen. back Amen. The, the children to the faith of the fathers. Amen. The original apostolic Pentecostal faith Amen. is promised to be restored. Amen. Now that's just as plain as Scripture can say it. Now it's promised. And if we're in the last days, Something's got to happen. Amen. And it is happening. Amen. And we're seeing it. Amen. Notice Satan's Trinity. Same person coming, just incarnate from one to the other. That's the way them bugs did, them worms, one to the other. Exactly. Nicolaitan, spiritual antichrist, Pope, false prophet, beast. The devil himself incarnate. He can't do it. Now, you keep that on your mind now. When you follow this, you're going to see these riders come right straight up to them. See, I'm laying you a picture here. If I had it on a blackboard, you could understand it better. See, I'm watching. First, now you remember this. The first thing he is, he's an antichrist spirit. John said so. Little children, the spirit of antichrist already worked in the children of disobedience. See, that thing will begin to start. And then it becomes kind of a saying in the next church age. And the next church age, it was a doctrine. And the next church age, she was crowned. Yeah. Uh, isn't that just as plain as reading yeah. anywhere you can read it? See? Yeah. See, there he comes. Now, first, he was called what? Antichrist, spirit, because he was against the word. Yeah. That's what started it. Yeah. That's exactly what done the whole thing was turning from God's word. Not because Eve uh, might have given Cain a spanking one day. See? That wasn't what done it. The first thing that done the whole thing was that she turned from the Word. Amen. She turned from the Word. And the first thing started the prostitution in the church of the living God, Christ's bride. She turned from the Word Amen. and accepted Roman dogma in a stead of God's Word. Amen. What's happened to every organization did the very same thing. Amen. Now, but promised that in the last days he would make a way to restore again the word of the Lord would drop upon the earth as he did it in the beginning and all and would restore back what? What started it? Against the word. And what is this fellow supposed to do when he comes anointed with God? Spirit? He just brings the faith of the children back to the fathers. Amen. That's how he restores. Amen. And you get the same word in the same place that it is here, it's going to do the same thing. Amen. Jesus said, If any man be in mine, if he that believeth in me, the works that I do shall he do also. 
And when they asked him to do certain things, he said, I'll do just what the Father shows me. I don't do nothing until I see it first. What I see the Father doing, that I do also. The Father worketh, and then I work a hitherto. See? Don't you see it? Yeah. Well, it's just like reading the newspaper. See? Now, now first, then he become an antichrist. Now, he couldn't be antichrist only in spirit. Then he become an antichrist, and that spirit took a man that taught the same things that that antichrist spirit was doing, and then he become a false prophet to the antichrist spirit. Amen. Now, what about a man in an organization? Suit yourself. I don't know what you think about it. All right. Now, finally, he becomes a beast. Amen. Wait, we'll get into that after a while. We'll see. All right. Now, if Satan's trinity lays like that, Satan all the time, Satan, Antichrist spirit, Antichrist spirit incarnate, false prophet, then becomes a beast. See? When not a demon that was in that Antichrist, but when Satan himself is kicked out, he comes down and takes over the place where the demon was. Amen. The devil in. Then the devil is incarnate in a man. It's just repeating itself. That's what Judas is carrot was. And what did he do? Was he one of the fellows that was against Christ? Why, he was a treasure. Walk with him. Certainly. Walked right along with him, went out there and cast out devils and done just exactly what they did. And Christ was the incarnate God. God incarnate in flesh, Emmanuel. And Judas was the son of perdition, as Jesus was son of God. Incarnate God, incarnate devil. Some people only see three crosses at that time. There was four of them. There was three on Golgotha that we see. That was Jesus in the middle, a thief on his left and a thief on his right. And watch. One thief said to the other, or said to Jesus, If, now you know he's the Word, but if thou be the Word. <laughs> won't you say to yourself, won't you do something about it? That's the same thing today. Have you heard these old devils come say, if you believe in the wrong healing, here's somebody the eyes. Won't you open their eyes? Yeah. Smite me blind. Smite me blind. Amen. That's the same old devil. Yeah. They, come down off the cross, we believe you. Yeah. If you be the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. Yeah. Same devil. Yeah. Just walk away. Amen. No. That's the way Jesus did it. He never clown for any of them. Put a rag over his hand, over his precious eyes like that, and they took a stick and hit him on top of the head said, Tell us, if you're a prophet, now tell us who hit you. They changed the stick one to another. Now, tell us who hit you, and we'll believe you're a prophet. He never opened his mouth. He just said that. He don't clown. He just does as the Father says. Let them go ahead. Their time's coming. Don't worry. Now, they touched his garment. They felt no virtue, but a poor little woman had a need just touched his garment. He turned around and said, who touched me? There's a lot of different touches. Depends on how you're touching. What you believe. Now, you see, now as Satan is going to, has incarnate himself from Antichrist, the false prophet now, and in the days of the Jew, he was Antichrist amongst the early church. In the dark ages, he become a false prophet to the world. Here there's a cup of iniquity. Now that's to the church age. Now. But in the age after the church goes home, he becomes a beast. He becomes the devil incarnate, yes. the red dragon himself. Amen. Yeah. Oh, my. Can't you see what I mean? He's incarnate in his people then. He's got his people bound by his power. Yeah. Amen. The false prophet has prophesied him right into it. Amen. Give him over to strong delusions to believe a lie and be damned Amen. by it. Yes. Denying Amen. the word with a form of godliness. God works his place in the Trinity. Justification, sanctification, and incarnate himself and his people with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Same thing. The devil is just in a type after Christ. Oh, Satan incarnates himself. Now what? Satan, when Jesus incarnates himself in his people, the very life that was in Christ is in the person. That's right. Amen. What would it do if you took the life out of a grapevine and put it in a pumpkin vine? It wouldn't bear pumpkins no more, it'd bear grapes. Yeah. What if you took the life out of a peach tree and put it in a pear tree? Would it bear pears? No, it'd bear peaches. Yeah. The life tells what it is. See? 
When you say here, people say they got the Holy Ghost and deny this word, there's something wrong. Amen. The Holy Ghost wrote that word. And Jesus said this, if a man has my spirit in him, he'll do my works. You want to read that? You'll put it down in St. John 14, 12. Yeah. All right. He that believeth in me, the works that I do shall he do also, even more than this shall he do. For I go to the Father. See? Then he sanctifies and cleans him so he can stand before God. That drop of ink falls there and takes him across the chasm. See? Now what? Satan, when he incarnates himself in his subjects, they do the work that he did. <laughs> Don't you see? What did he do? Come right to that innocent woman to deceive her. And that's exactly what some of these devils do. Amen. Come right into a place and say, a little pastor gets started out somewhere, come in and say, oh, if you just join up with us. <laughs> the same devil work. Now, that's the truth. Amen. And when Satan becomes incarnate into his church and to be a devil, then they are the ones that does the murdering and killing and so forth. Because Satan is a killer in the first place, the liar. See? All right. What does Satan do when he does? When he becomes incarnate amongst the people? It's his duty to be shrewd. He is shrewd. You search the Bible. And you show me where God ever dealt with the intellectual people. Amen. Hunt for it. And see if it isn't always the intellectuals that's devil possessed. It's a big word, but it's the truth. Amen. I challenge you to take the, the lineage from Abel's to Cain. And then 14 generations run them off and see which ones was on the smart side and which ones are the humble ones. Amen. Why didn't Jesus choose such people? He got fishermen and men that couldn't even sign their own name Amen. to put them ahead of his church. Amen. That's right. Amen. Wisdom is, is nothing. It's, it's against Christ. Amen. Worldly wisdom is against Christ. Amen. Always. Jesus never did tell us to go build seminaries. He never did it. Having Bible schools. Amen. He said, preach the word. Amen. Preach the gospel. Amen. And then if he said, these signs shall follow them that believe, see, you'll have to have the, in other words, he said, go demonstrate the power of God. Amen. To all nations. Now watch. Satan's duty is to pervert the word of God to wisdom's reasoning. Oh, my. Oh, then he marks his subjects by rejecting the original word. Now, will, you, will, you, will you suffer me just a little bit before we get this? this I don't want you to miss this. Let me show you the type so you can see it all in typing and word and everything. You, you, can't, you shouldn't go away confused. In the Old Testament, when a man had been sold to slavery, there come a year of jubilee, every 50 years, 49th year, and then the year of jubilee. And when a slave heard this, and he wanted to go free, there's, there is a nothing that can keep him from going free. He can throw down his hoe and say, so long. Go back home. Amen. The trumpet sounded. Amen. That's right. But if he don't want to go and he's satisfied with his slave master, then he's taken into the, uh, the temple and they take an awl. You know what an awl is. And they press his ear and put a hole in his ear. And it's a mark that he can never go back. Amen. Is that right? Amen. He has to serve this master for all time. I don't care how many more times the Jubilee sounds, whatever happens, he absolutely has, has sold out his birthright of being free. And when a man turns down the gospel truth, Amen. Satan marks him Amen. at his ear. Amen. He deafens him so he can't hear the truth no more. Amen. And he's finished. Wow. He stays with the group that he's with Amen. if he won't hear the truth. No, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Amen. The truth makes free. God marks his when they come. 
God marks his by vindicating his promised word to them. Exactly. St. John uh, 14, 12. And another thing you're going to put in Mark 16. <laughs> Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. Now let's just take that a minute. Was he joking? No. <laughs> did he just mean uh, did he just mean the apostles as uh, some would tell us? No. Watch. Read the background of it. Go ye into where? All, All the world. Preach the, this gospel to what? Yeah. Every creature. It has not even one third of the way met it yet. These signs shall follow in all the world to every creature where this gospel is preached. These signs shall follow them that believe. Not just a one little handful. Like a fellow at one time tell me God only gave the twelve apostles gifts of healing and <laughs> man, the brother was sitting here when he raised up to say that thing. You got enough of it in a few minutes. <laughs> so now, notice, all the world, to every creature, these signs shall follow. Don't take Satan's unbelieving mark. Now, he'll put it on you tonight if he can. He'll do it. He'll poke you up against the wall and he'll walk out and say, oh, I don't know about that. Uh -huh. You go home and study it. Amen. And then be sincere and pray. Because everything's too, it's too perfectly scriptural at this very hour, this sacred hour of time. Amen. It's done been for years, proof come right up to it, and this is the hour. Amen. This is the time. Right. And now, don't let him poke that in your ear, his unbelieving mark, see, because he was an unbeliever to begin with. He doubted it. All right. Oh, don't, even let, don't let him take the scripture with his wisdom and and twist it and pervert it with his own wisdom into reasoning powers. Amen. You just be humble and say, God said so, and that's all good. Amen. Now, all this, we're going to get too late, so we better stop right here and start on. Now, let's go to the second seal. When the slain, risen lamb opened it, and the second uh, calf-like beast said, Come see what the seal mystery is. Now we get it. The Lamb, you remember, has to open every seal. And the second beast, if you notice in the routine of where we just went through at the church stage, is the same thing. The second first was a lion. The next was a was a was like a calf or an ox or something, you see. And this beast said, Come see. Now, and when the lamb opened the seal, and then uh, he went to see. And when he walked in, what happened? Let's see what he found. Come see, there's a mystery sealed up here. It's been here now for 2,000 years about. Let's see what it is. Now, we find here that he saw what? A red horse go forward. Now, to my understanding, this, to my understanding, this great sword that he had in his hand. Now, we got about three things to look at now for about the next 15, 20 minutes. Let's just read and see what he says here. And there went out, the fourth verse, there went out another horse that was red, the first one was white, and power was given unto him that set their own to take peace from the earth, and they should kill one another and there was given him a great sword. Now, there's symbols here. And we want to look at them real close. But to my understanding, the best that I know now, you see, Jesus predicted the same thing in Matthew 24. Amen. See? He said, now you're going here of wars and rumors of wars and this wars and rumors of wars and wars and that's what all these ain't yet. Yeah. See? Finally, yes. Yeah. See, they asked Jesus three questions. See? And he answered him in three questions. That's where a lot of our brethren got tangled up trying to place um, uh, the Adventist brethren about those seventh day and so forth back there to warn to her to give child, give something, the gates will be closed on the Sabbath day and things like that. Mine. 
They don't even pertain to the question at all. Amen. Not at all. See? He's answering what they ask, but he didn't. He didn't. Uh, it didn't apply at all to the last day. He said, "You'll hear." Now we're working on this one thing here. We'll come to some more of it in a few nights. Look, he said, "You'll hear of wars and rumors of wars and so forth." Now all this is not. See, then they'll go back again. Then they'll deliver you up and so forth like this. Oh, oh that's not right yet. But when he got to the time when he's going to talk to him about what they asked him about the end of the world, when will all these things be? When will there be one stone left up on? What will the sign be? And when will it be coming to the end of the world? See? They asked him three things. Then when he got down to the end of the world, he said, when you see the fig tree putting forth its bud. Amen. Now you know that the time is at the door. And verily I say to you that this generation shall not pass until all be fulfilled. How the infidel, and that's the interpretation I can lay onto that. He, he said, This generation, not the generation is talking to, the generation has seen the fig tree putting forth its bud. Now, I was going to ask you something. Just, uh, just, just look at something right here in the face. Israel is now, for the first time for 2,500 years, a nation. The oldest flag in the world is flying over Jerusalem tonight. Amen. Israel's in her homeland. There was a brother here one time wanted to be a missionary, felt uh, to go missionary to the Jews. I said, you might get one now. And then all people think the whole nation. No, sir. Israel is converted as a nation, Amen. not as a person. A nation will be born in a day. Amen. That's Israel. All Israel saved. Just remember that Paul said so. All Israel saved. Now, notice, all Israel. That's exactly right. Now, Notice this. But he said, when you see the fig tree and all the other trees putting forth their bud. Now look, there's never been a time for 2,500 years that Israel has ever come to her homeland. We got the little show of three minutes to midnight. There she is, the nation, the six-point star of David's line, all these things. Has there ever been a time that the denominations has had revivals like they had in the last few years? I just study now. We're at home. When did the denominations ever bloom out out or any man's ministry like it has a Billy Graham? Methodist, Baptist, and so forth. When was there ever a man, search down your history, that ever went forward to the church formal by the name ending with H-A-M? before. It's a question. Now look, Abraham's name has seven letters, A-B-R-A-H-A-M. But our brother Billy Graham has G-R-A-H-A-M, six, not seven, the world. That's where he's ministering to. Church natural. Church natural was locked and solid. And when this fellow went down there and preached and blinded him by the gospel, Amen. but there was one who stayed with Abraham. Amen. And Abraham called him Elohim, Lord. Now when Abraham seen three coming, he said, My Lord. Amen. When Lot seen two coming, he said, My Lord. Amen. That's your difference. See your truth here in work? Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot. You see that? Notice. Count it. Now, there was one come to this church spiritual, the bride, Abraham, that wasn't in, in Sodom to begin with. Amen. And watch what he did. He never done no preaching like they did. He taught them, but then they done a sign before him. He done the Messiah sign. He had his back turned to the tent. And he said, Abraham, I remember his actual name a few days before that was Abram. But he says, Abraham, where is your wife? S-A-R-A-H. A few days before that was called S-A-R-R-A. Abraham said, she's in the tent behind you. And he said, Abraham, I, there's your personal pronoun name, Amen. I 
I am going to visit you a part of the promise that I made to you. You see where it was? A man with dust on his clothes, eating the meat of a calf and drinking the milk from the cow and eating cornbread. God, Elohim, manifested in flesh, promised in the last days to manifest himself in flesh again. Notice. Abraham, where is your wife Sarah? She's in the pit behind you said, I'm going to visit you. And the lady, of course, being a hundred years old, she kind of laughed up her sleeve. Back in the tent now, behind the curtains in the tent. She said, me and the old woman. Well, it has ceased to be of them the husband and wife for years, you know, because he was a hundred years old and, and uh, she was ninety. Said, I, I, that will never happen. And he said, why did she laugh? With his back turned to the tent. Amen. Why did she laugh saying, how can these things be? See? Amen. He showed him a sign. Amen. Now he promises that this will repeat at the end time. Amen. Again. And the two men went down there and preached the word and told him to get out of there. The place is going to burn up and so forth. And it did. And Lot staggered out the church natural. Down in sin, in the mar, but yet struggling along in their organizational programs. But the bride, that one man, never went to them. He went only and called the bride type. Amen. Now we're in the last days. See? Now notice, you said their God manifested in the flesh. Jesus said himself, how do you condemn me? said, is it written in your Bible, your laws, that they, the prophets, who the Word of God came to, Jesus said the Word came to the prophets, because he was scriptural in all things. He said, now, uh, the Word of God says that the Word came to the prophets, and you call them gods. Amen. Or the Word of God came to him. So then how are you going to condemn me when I say I'm the Son of God? Amen. Well, all, oh, oh, my. There you are. See? Now, where are we at? We're at the end time. Now, listen real close now. <clears throat> now, we find out that there would be wars and rumors of wars, and now we see that the fig trees put forth its buds, and the other trees put forth their buds. Methodists, Baptists, Presbyterians and all put forth their buds. A great revival going on. Now, I believe that God's gathering the bride Amen. for that last hour, Amen. the elect. Oh, my. I notice. Let us now consider what John saw then, if these things, what he saw. A red horse and his rider goes forth, power given to him to slay with a great sword. Now, here's my revelation of it. This is Satan again. Amen. It's the devil. Again in another form. Amen. Now we know that that um, seals pertain, as I said the other night, and trumpets pertain to, 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 to civil wars, you see, amongst the people, among nations. But you find out here that this man has a sword, so it pertains to church political war. Now you might not think that, but just watch it a minute. Notice the change of color of these horses. Same rider. Change of color of horses. And a horse is a beast. And the beast in the Bible and her symbol represents a power. The same system riding on another color power. From the innocent white to a bloody red. See? Watch him now. He's coming. When he first started, he was just, uh, well, he's just a little doctrine in a, in a much called the Nicolaitanism. Of course, it wouldn't slay anything. That's Revelation 2 6, if you want to put it down. He wouldn't slay anything. It's just a doctrine. It's a spirit amongst the people. Now, he wouldn't slay nothing. Oh, he was so innocent riding on his white horse. Well, you know, we could have a great worldwide church, we could call it the universal church. <coughs> They still do. All right. 
See? Now, we could have, oh, it's perfectly innocent. And, um, well, it's so innocent, it's just a group of men. We'll all get together for fellowship. See, it's very innocent. It's white, the white horse was, see? Now, so the um, uh, dignitaries and the better dressed and the educated, you know, kind of like birds of a feather, you know, we we'll, we'll kind of get things together. Uh, poor bunch, why? Well, uh, if they want to stumble along, well, all right, but we, we, we'll get a better class coming to our church. Yeah. If we can just get ourselves pulled off right here, we'll, we'll, be, a, we'll be a bunch of masons or so forth. You know, we'll, we'll just have the things fixed up, or, or odd fellows as they are. <laughs> and so then, not the odd fellow lodge now, but you know what I mean. So um, it's odd to the real believer. Now, but otherwise, in other words, we want a little group, a little... Syndicate, we can call our own. It's just a doctrine. Very innocent. Brothers, why, we have nothing against you people. Certainly not. You're all right, but you know, uh, we feel that um, if we have business, in there, we, we'd be better off if we just had ourselves together. Yeah. See? Amen. It finally went right on down to Hatton. Yes, sir. Get together. But when this awful deceiving spirit, oh man, incarnated, in, incarnate, Spirit, this doctrine, spirit, became incarnated to take the place of Christ into a man. It must be worshipped then, turned to be a worship like Christ. In other words, up over the Vatican, I've been right there. It's wrote vicarious of Philadelphia. And it's wrote in Roman numerals. Now, you just draw a line at the bottom of those Roman numerals, and it means instead of Son of God. In other words, he's a biker. You know what a biker is? Just take the place of something. He is the biker instead of the Son of God. And the Bible said, let him that has the gift of wisdom count the numbers of the beast. For it's a number of a man, and his number is 666. Now you take Vicarious Philadelphia and draw a line for Roman numbers of B for five and I for one, and add it up and see if you haven't got 666. Amen. The Bible said he would be set in the temple of God, worship like God. When that little doctrine become a incarnate, it become a biker. Instead of the Son of God. See? Oh, my, the awful deceiving spirit. Amen. If you ought to read that, read in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. And you can see where it's at. And, of course, you will remember Satan is the head of all political power of every nation. Amen. How many know that? Amen. You want to put it down? Matthew 4, 8. Satan took Jesus up to a high mountain. And he showed him all the kingdoms of the world that ever was or ever would be Amen. in a moment of time. Amen. Talk about a person. He said, I'll give them to you if you'll worship me. And Jesus knew that he was going to fall heir to them. That's what they say. Well, you bunch of poor holy rollers. Well, we get the world. Amen. The meek shall inherit the earth. That's what Jesus said. See? See? Notice. Jesus noted he'd fall heir to him, so he said, Get thee hence, Satan. It's written right back with the scripture again. See, I shall worship the Lord and him only. See? Now, now, when, when he as his head, demon, incarnate in this super religious man, as the Bible predicts, then he unites his church and state both. All his own powers unite together. See, when the Antichrist spirit went forth, it was a spirit. Then it become what? It become then, I want this deal. When the spirit went forth, it was Antichrist against the teaching of Christ. All right. The next thing did, what Christ set out for his church to do, it was against saying that, oh, don't, it don't mean that. It, uh, it don't mean it. That was for somebody else. That That's back in the... A hundred years ago back there. That, that ain't for us, see? That's the anti. Again. Then it becomes, now the rider went out, he, he didn't have no crown, but he was given one. That white horse. He had a boat, no air. See? So then when he went forth, 
Then after a while he was given a crown, because you can't put a crown on a spirit dead. But when this spirit become incarnate, the second work of his of his dispensation, of his mystery, the second work, he become a crowned false prophet to the working of the Antichrist spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, we see him now. Now, he becomes that, when he takes that, then he uh, is already Satan controls the political powers of the world. Now he gets into a place that he's going to make a universal church power. Amen. Taking religious power. And do you not understand, my brothers, that in, when this nation appears in the 13th chapter of Revelation, this little animal raised up like a lamb. And it's got two horns, civil and ecclesiastical power. But he done the same thing the beast did before him. Amen. It's strange. America is number 13 and a woman. It's strange that it appears even in the 13th chapter of Revelation. We start out with 13 stripes for the flag, 13 stars, everything 13, 13, 13, 13, all the way down. And everything's woman, woman, woman. And it finally end up, I predicted, a woman will control her. I remember that 30 years ago I said it, and, and, and the, the seven things that I predicted, five of them is going to come to pass, and they got the man right there now to bring her in. <laughs> and you voted in through your politics. Sir. <laughs> All right. So much to say. You can't hardly get to where you want to get to. Notice now, I won't keep you a little bit longer if I have to we'll tear it over tomorrow night. Look, notice. When Satan, uh, everybody that realizes that Satan controls all political powers of the world. Amen. He said so. Matthew, the fourth chapter. You get it. In the eighth verse. All the kingdoms belong to him. Amen. That's the reason they fight, war, kill. I remember. Isn't that strange? They was given this sword to kill one another. <laughs> Amen. Oh, my. Notice. Now. Now, when he did that, he did not have the ecclesiastical power yet. But he started in with a demon of a false teaching. And that teaching become a doctrine. That doctrine become incarnate in a false prophet. And then he went just to the right place. He never went to Israel now. He went to Rome. Now I see a Rome. The council was held and they elected a head bishop. Amen. And then by doing this, they united church and state together. Amen. Then he dropped his bowl. He got off his white horse. He got on his red horse. Amen. Or he can kill anybody that don't agree with him. Amen. There's your seal. Amen. Same fella. Watch him ride on into eternity under with it, see? Unites both his powers together. The same thing they're trying to do right now. Same thing. Today, and a strange thing, maybe you don't understand it, but today, from a Baptist group in Louisville, you heard it on the radio, a speaker raised up, and you haven't heard it. See? All right, here you are. They want and ask in the church now that we don't really have to... Um, or just kind of join the Catholic Church, but we have to kind of fellowship with them, get it? And the same time they're going on in Louisville, over here God's unfolding the seals to His people to show them, don't do it! Amen. See them both working together? Remember, the crow and dove sat on the same roost pole. Just remember. Now, we find out he unites his power. Then when he becomes both state and church, the ecclesiastical, then what are you going to do? He forms his own religion. And now he can do whatever he wants to. Then he has the right to put to death whosoever will not agree with him. That's exactly what he did, too. Amen. And he did that just exactly. And what did he do? He did it to the true saints of the living God who kept the word and wouldn't agree with him on his dogmas. He put them to death. Amen. Now, Brother Lee Bingham, 
and new teachers here of the uh, Nicaea age in the early church. I don't know whether you read this or not. If you want to read it, you get in Smucker's Glorious Reformation, and you find it that when St. Augustine of Hippo become a priest under the Roman church, had the opportunity to one time the Holy Spirit tried to come on him, and he rejected it. How many knows that? As a teacher. Well, he rejected the Holy Spirit. That's exactly what the type of the Protestant church today Amen. that's rejected the Holy Ghost. Amen. He went back down to Hippo and he was the very one that signed that, that paper that had the revelation from God that it was all right and pleasing God to put every person to death that didn't believe with the Roman Catholic Church. Now listen, I'm quoting from the martyrology. From the time of of St. Augustine of Hippo until 1586 on the Roman martyrology, the Roman Catholic Church put 68 million Protestants to death. Was his sword red? Was he riding a red horse? What was it? The same power. The same rider. There's the seal. They admit 68 million on the martyrology besides all those put to death outside of that. Oh, mercy. During the dark ages, there were millions fed the lions and slaughtered in that way because they wouldn't bow down to that Catholic dogma. You know that. How much time you got? All right, let me read something. Turn with me now. Let me show you something. Let's, let's picture this thing just a minute. It's happened to come on my mind, and we'll just read it. Let's turn over in Revelation to the 17th chapter of Revelation. We still got 15 minutes. Yes. All right? Now listen real, real close now. As we read, you have your Bibles and turn. I'm going to give you just a little time so that you'll get it. You get that lead in Smuckers is where I got it. The glorious re- reform that's taken straight out of the martyrology of Rome at the Vatican. Now, that was down to the persecution of St. Patrick's people. And then they call St. Patrick their, their saint. St. Patrick is about as much Catholic as I am. You know how much I am. He, de- he detested the doctrine of the church. He refused to go to the Pope. Yes, sir. St. Patrick even... Why, you ever go up Northern Ireland where he had his schools? You know, his name wasn't Patrick. How many knows that? His name is Suscat. That's right. Lost his little sister. You remember when they were... All right. Now notice. 17th chapter of Revelation. Now everybody, just try to open your heart. Let the Holy Spirit teach you now. There came unto me one of the seven angels which had the, had the seven vials. Now I see the seven vials. You know these sevens as we're going through. They all had right at the same time following the plagues, following the church angels. It's the same. Because it's all sealed up into that one book. Everything, and everything happens just in rotation, and one goes right into the other, and the other, and the other. There's two spirits are working. God and the devil. Amen. Which had the seven last vows, and he talked with me, saying, Come here, and I'll show thee unto thee the judgment of the great whore that setteth upon many waters. Now look here, over here. That waters, whore. What is that? That's a woman. It can't be a man. And what is a woman's symbol in the church, in the Bible? Church. Why? Christ, bride, and so forth, you see, woman, the church. Now, waters, what does that mean? Watch here. Read the 15th verse over there. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore setteth, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. This church is ruling over the whole world. See? Therefore, many waters. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Spiritual fornication is taking her doctrine, Nicolaitan doctrine. And the habits of the earth has been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Boy, you talk about a drunken bunch on it. You. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman. And did you know what? The Catholics own writing admit this is their church. How many knows that? Right in their own writing. I got facts of our faith, it's called. It belongs to a priest. All right. 
All right? And so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting up on a scarlet clothed beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Now just watch that, that symbol. That's seven heads. Now you see here it says, and the and the and the the, the heads which thou sawest are seven hills on which the woman set it. Rome sets on seven hills. See? Now there's no mistake about it, see. Seven heads and ten horns, your ten kingdoms and so forth. And the woman was arrayed in purple, scarlet clothes, decked in gold and precious stones, pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of, of abomination, of, abomination of the filthiness of her fornication. That antichrist spirit, fornication, <laughs> see, see, uh, committing adultery with Paul. See, now she's supposed to be a bride, see, and committing an adultery, see, just like Eve did, just like the church does there. See. And upon her head was written, a name written, Mystery Babylon, the Great. And anybody knows Babylon's Rome. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And, listen to the sixth verse, And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. She is such a beautiful thing with crosses and everything on her, how in the world could she be the guilty of drinking the blood of the saints? It puzzled him. I was going to tell him. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore does thou marvel? I'll tell thee the mystery of the woman and the beast that carried her. Now this is not under the one of the seals. This is something else. And he said, The seven heads and the ten horns, the beast thou sawest, was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, has no foundation, the Pope, and shall go into perdition, and they that dwell upon the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the Lamb's Book of Life as the elected. Life from the foundation of the world. How, when was your name put on the Book of Life? That revival you attended? No, sir. From the foundation of the world. When they beheld the beast that was, he is not, and yet is. See, the beast, one will die, another will take his place. He was, he was not, he was, he was not, was, he was not, and should go plumb into perdition. That way, see? All right. And here is, and here is the mind which has wisdom. How many knows his nine spiritual gifts and one of them are wisdom? All right. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman set it. You'd have to be totally blind, deaf, and dumb not to get that. <laughs> All right. There are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is Nero, and one is to come. And when he cometh, he must continue just a short space. You remember what he done? Burnt the city and laid down to the Christians and put his mother on a single tree of a horse and run her through the streets and fiddle. <laughs> Rome burnt. All right. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. Pagan Rome brought into Papal Rome. When the incarnate Antichrist spirit become incarnate and was crowned, he was made a crown king of Rome. Amen. Amen. Both in state and church together. Amen. Oh, brother, see, it's just full of it. Hmm? And he's the seventh, and he goeth, how long does he last? They never change the system to perdition. The ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no king. Kingdoms as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. That's dictators, you see, of course. These have one mind. All right, look here, and they talk about communism. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called chosen and faithful. And he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore setteth, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. The ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. And that covenant is broken I talked about last night. And shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Don't you know the Bible says that the shipmasters and everything else in the last, the last that great city? Yeah. That's met its doom in one hour. See? For God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdoms over to the beast until the word of God shall be fulfilled. The woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over all the kings of the earth. Amen. Tell me one 
Russia don't reign over all. We don't reign over all. There's only one king that reigns over ever like that. Nebuchadnezzar's iron running out there, one of them toes. That's Rome. Amen. Rome don't do it as a nation. It does it as a church. Amen. Every nation under heaven is to Rome. No one that said who can make war with him. He can say peace. That settles it. Yeah. Every Catholic says don't fight. They will fight. That's all. Who's able to do what he can do? Nobody. That's right. So they wonder if the miracles he can do. He can stop war. The only thing he has to is to stop. That's all. But you think he'll do it? <laughs> Certainly not. Notice. That show, show they should kill one another, or should kill each other. His bow had no arrows at first, but his great sword did. He done his killing later and changed from white horse to red horse, the same exactly devil. With his sword. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, They that take the sword will perish back. Don't fight back. See? Jesus that night when he told said that, and Peter took his sword. See? It, it's too like he did. Let's go ahead. Now, now remember, he's got a sword. He's going forth, a uh, sword in his hand, riding red horse, waiting to the blood of everybody that disagrees with him. Now, do you understand it? Amen. How many understands what that seal is now? Amen. All right. Now, what did Jesus say? They that take the sword will perish by the sword. Is that right? All right. All right, this rider and all his kingdom subjects that are slain down through the age, that's drawn all this blood, are the martyrs of the saints, will be slain by the sword of Jesus Christ when he comes. They that take the sword will be slain by the sword. They took the sword of dogma and antichrist and cut down the real true worshipers all down through the ages to the million. And when Christ comes with the sword, for it's his word that proceeds out of his mouth, he'll slay every enemy that is before him. Amen. You believe it? Yes. 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 Let's go here in just a minute. Revelation, we'll see now if I'm just saying that or where the word says it. Revelation 19 11. And I saw heaven open. Amen. And behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him is called faithful and true. And in righteousness he's a judge and make war. His eyes were the flames of fire. And on his head, many crowns. Oh, brother. See, he's done me crowned by saints. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. You remember? We, we, can't, we don't know that. And he was clothed. Let's see. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called, not is, but called the Word of God. For he in the Word is the same. See? Now notice, not his names. Amen. 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 His name. Amen. Called. Amen. Word of God. Amen. It only knows one name. No other name. And the armies of heaven, which were in heaven, followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's the righteousness of saints. See? Now watch. What did Jesus say? He that takes the sword. All right, red horse rider, here's where she's coming. Amen. He that takes the sword, you Amen. might have killed 68 million of them down through these ages since then. Amen. Maybe more. But Jesus said, he that takes the sword will perish by it. Watch. <laughs> and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Amen. Hebrews, the fourth chapter, said the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Amen. Cutting even to the mire of the bone. And what else does the word do? It's a discerner of the thoughts of the heart. Amen. Right. Out of his mouth goes a sharp, to a, a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treads the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God and he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. As the imposters against the word of God and because they wouldn't agree. And this thing, Satan placed, united the political powers, which he held, and the spiritual powers, 
which he held together and made a church that sweeps into every nation, and he's put millions times millions after he jumped off from his white horse onto his red horse, and he took his sword and went forth, but God said, with the same thing that he perverted or tried to, but a false teaching, that same word will rise in power coming forth from the lips of Jesus Christ and it shall slay him and everything before him. Amen. Amen. There's the second seal. You love me? Oh, my. That's thus saith the law. and visions and everything that's hit just exactly on the, on the point. And how many knows that? Raise your hand. Amen. Hundreds. Everybody here with your hands up. That's right. So shall this be. Amen. Remember, it's so. Oh, friend. Come to the fountain that's filled with blood. Drawn from Emmanuel's veins where sinners plunge beneath the flood lose all their guilty stains. Come believe on him if you've never. Don't take any chance. Don't, don't, if there's anything in your life, friend, we're here, something's fixing to happen. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know uh, when. Lord. I know what's going to happen, but I don't know when it's going to happen. But it's bound to be because he's revealing it right now. He doesn't do anything unless he makes it known. Amos 3. He makes it known first. And he promised that these things would come in the last days and the seventh church age, at the end of it, when the messengers arrived, there it would be. It would be revealed, those broken seals would be revealed and here they are. That's in the name of the Lord. Amen. Believe it, friends. Hallelujah. Just come out of that. Hallelujah. I want to say something before closing because I got... I'm getting just 9.30, it's just right now time. Billy and I, when we got off of the plane in India, our last trip there, I was looking at a, a paper that they brought was written in English, and it said, the earthquake must be over, the birds are coming back. Then it gives the details. They, they, something funny happened. Uh, India don't have... Uh, woven fences like we do, they pick up rocks and make their fences. And they build all their houses out of rock, just place them up there, and it's warm there, around oh, any, uh, where, pretty near in India, let's get up in the mountains, and all down to Calcutta and things, the people just lay on the streets starving to death, so forth. Now, so, uh, and they build their houses and towers of uh, their house, they run the, the fence right up here at the side of their house. Build a tower for their house, the tower maybe where they got their well, they dug it for their cattle and things, they run their fences around, and all at once something began to happen. The little birds will go into those rocks, and they build their nests and raise their young ones, and something began to happen. Every day when it would get hot, all the cattle will come around and stand under the shadow of those walls, keep cool. And all the little birds live in those places. And all of a sudden, all them little birds were some unknown reason. Now, you know what we said the other day about little birds? Some unknown reason. They all took off. And they went out and didn't come back to their nest. They went out in the field. And they sat in the trees, wherever they could get, right out on the ground. The cattle wouldn't come around. The sheep wouldn't come around. They stayed right in the field and hugged up against one another. Good way to do. They knew that something was going to happen. Then all of a sudden, an earthquake took place and shook the walls down, the fences down, and everything else. Then the little birds began to come back. Didn't come back for three or four days, then began to come back. They said, well, the earthquakes must be over now. The birds are coming back. Why? Don't you believe that the same God that could make them birds and cattle and sheep in the days of Noah go into the ark, he's still the same God that can make them fly to safety? Amen. Is that right? Yeah. Now let me say something, brother. There's something fixing to happen. And all these big old ecclesiastical walls are going to collapse. Yeah. And go right back over here under the degree because we're going to do it as certain as I'm standing here. 
There's an image to that beast that's as certain as I'm standing here in this nation tucking, according to the word of the law. Listen, when you feel that little funny feeling, you get away from them walls. Get away, you'll die out of there. Don't do it. Come out of it. Get away from all this stuff. Flee to safety as quick as you can. Ask God for mercy. Don't just take something well. My mother was Methodist, so I suppose I'll be. My papa was Baptist, I'll be. Don't you do that. Don't you don't you take any chance. I don't care how simple and humble it seems. It's the word of the Lord. You flee to Jesus Christ just as quick as you can and stay there until God fills you with his Holy Spirit. Amen. For the hour is going to come when you're going to hunt for it, and it won't be there. Amen. So be sure to do it. Let's bow our heads. <laughs> Heavenly Father, oh, I, I just sometimes, Lord, stand here and, and I tremble. I think of that awful hour that's approaching. And I, there's no way to stop it. It's predicted that it would come. Now I thought, of why don't the people come and and, and listen, and won't they come and accept it? But, of course, I know that, that you, you said they wouldn't, so uh, they won't. But there is some that's got their names written on the Lamb's Book of Life. And when them seals are thrown open there, they see their name there, and the Holy Spirit speaks to them, they come. You can't keep them away. No one can. No one. They're coming anyhow because you're leading them like you did those little birds and the sheep and the cattle, our God, some instinct that them animals have, that they know that they must get away. If instinct to an animal could warn him to flee from danger, what should the Holy Spirit do to a church that claims to be filled with it? God be merciful to us. Forgive us all, Lord, of our shortcomings. We don't mean to stand here in this pulpit and let these people stand around walls and their limbs are aching and then just go away and say, well, that sounds very good. Lord, we want to do something about it. We, we want you to search our heart. If there's anything wrong, Lord, let us know now. Please don't let us come to that hour. Yonder one is too late. Search me. Try me, Lord. Here I stand here. Uh, 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 by the grace of God, seeing those seals broke down and come telling the people, when you predicted it would happen this way weeks ago, and now, Father, here it is right before. Oh, yeah. Now, Lord, try me. Yeah. Search me. Search me in my heart. Yep. Lord, we, don't, we, we want you to look into our lives. And if there's anything in there that's not right, just speak it to us, Lord. We want to make it right right now. Right now, while there is a fountain filled with blood, while there is a, a bleach that can cleanse our sins and unbelief, we want to plunge our souls beneath that, all of our unbelief. God, help our unbelief. Take it away from us, Lord. We want to receive rapture and grace. We want to be able, when that mysterious thunder thunders out under and the church is taken up, we want to be ready to receive it, Lord. Grant it. Try us, Lord. By thy word. Let us look into it. And if we see that we have failed, if there are those, your Lord, who are baptized in titles, knowing nothing about the real true baptism, may I be as faithful as Paul when he passed through the upper coast of Ephesus and he found disciples screaming and shouting and having a glorious time. He said unto them, Have you received then the Holy Ghost since you believe? They know not where they're being. He said, Then to what was you baptized? And they've been baptized by that glorious holy prophet. But they only baptized them to repentance. Then they were rebaptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And Paul commanded them to be baptized over again. Lord, in the light of your word, I command every person that's not baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to hasten to the water quickly while you have a chance. You have not been filled with the Holy Ghost. I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
fall to your knees and don't get up until the Holy Spirit has sanctified you thoroughly and fills you with His love and goodness until your soul is so satisfied in the presence of God that your whole desire is to serve Him and walk for Him and work with Him all the rest of your life. Granted, I pray that God will give you this charge in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Stand up so we can know you, know who you are. God bless you. Amen. Lord bless you. I guess there's 150 maybe standing here. Maybe it's like that if I could see all. I don't know what's in the rooms and around outside holding their hands up and so forth. But you have a need. Now let's pray. Now you who see those people. They're standing by you, and they're standing as a witness before Christ. I, I, I need you, Lord. I need you. I, I'm trusting. I'm, I'm one of those that's going to find my name tonight behind that seal yonder. Let us put on there for the foundation of the world. Something struck my heart, and I'm standing, Lord. Is it me? Are you calling me? I want you to reveal to me my name over there. Fill me and seal me into yourself by the Holy Ghost. You've already been sealed in. I want you to raise up. Turn around to them and lay your hands upon them. To pray for them. Now be deadly sincere. Heavenly Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the great 